Greetings, dear friends, and welcome to another session. In this video, we discuss the formation of the compound sentence, a handy device for enhancing the cohesion in your writing. And while we're at it, we're also going to have a look at certain important concepts such as the run-on sentence, the comma splice, and the use of the semicolon. So without further ado, let's begin. So before getting into what a compound sentence is, let's just quickly discuss its purpose. Now the use of a compound sentence is to join any two complete sentences that are in some way related to each other. This relation could either be a contrast or quite simply adding further information. Now let's get to the grammatical definition of a compound sentence which reads, a compound sentence is a sentence that has at least two independent clauses joined by a comma and a conjunction or a semicolon doesn't help much does it not to worry we're going to discuss each element of the definition one by one starting with the independent clause but before discussing that I think it'll be even better to understand what a clause is so getting right to it a clause can be considered the most basic the most fundamental building block to a sentence it is the smallest simplest sentence that you can write let's go to the definition which reads a clause is a group of related words containing a subject and a verb now, what is the subject? The subject in a sentence is a person or a thing that is either doing something or is being something. And the action that is being performed by the subject is deemed as the verb. In other words, the subject provides us the information to the who or the what in a sentence and the action that is being performed by the subject is called the verb. Let's understand this with the help of some examples to some basic clauses, starting with the first one, which is he eats. Now, the action that is being performed here is to eat, which becomes the verb. And who eats over here? He eats, hence he is the subject to the clause. Taking another simple clause here, which reads, she spoke. Now, the action that was performed here was that she spoke, which makes it the verb to the clause. And who spoke? It is she who spoke, and hence she becomes the subject. Finally, even two simple words put together as I am serve as a clause because I is the subject to the clause and am is the verb in the clause because am works as a verb of existence, as a verb of being, making I am another perfect example to a clause. And now I think we are ready to understand what an independent clause is. On to the definition of an independent clause. Let's have a look. So, an independent clause is a clause that can stand alone as a sentence and forms a complete thought. In other words, an independent clause is a complete sentence. And since it's a variety of the basic clause, it too has a subject and a verb. And in addition to that, it conveys full meaning. Let's go to some examples of the independent clause right away. Starting with perhaps the most common independent clause in the English language, we have I love you. Now, I serves as the subject to the clause, followed by love, which is the action being performed, making it the verb to the independent clause. One more example over here, we have Jane is running. Now, Jane is the subject over here, and the action that she's performing is running, which makes running the verb to the independent clause. Now, there may be instances where in the subject to the independent clause is divided into two parts. Let's have a look. So, this time, the independent clause reads, your mom and I love you. You see the subject divided into two parts, the first part being your mom and the second part being I, which put together serves as the subject to the independent clause, followed by the verb love. And hence you have another fully functional independent clause. Now, there may be also instances wherein the verb is divided into two parts, such as Jane is running and yelling. This time we have the verb split into two portions. We've got the first one as running and the second one is yelling. But running and yelling put together serves as the verb to the independent clause. Now you can further your understanding of the independent clause by comparing it to a dependent clause, which is an incomplete thought, such as because Jane was scared. So what happened if Jane was scared? So you can easily see that's an incomplete thought as compared to independent clauses which are complete in meaning. So now that we have a firm grip on the concept of the independent clause, we can move ahead and understand the first method of constructing a compound sentence. Let's go.
All right, so coming to the first method of forming compound sentences, which is using coordinating conjunctions. Now, coordinating conjunctions are seven basic connectors that are used to link or join two independent clauses. Namely, they are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Please bear in mind that for in this case is not the preposition for, but the conjunction that means because or since. You can easily remember these seven coordinating conjunctions using the mnemonic fanboys. You've got for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Handy, isn't it? Now let's have a look at the structure or the form of the compound sentence using coordinating conjunctions. We have the form as independent clause, followed by a comma, followed by the coordinating conjunction, followed by another independent clause. Now let's have a look at an example here. We have two independent clauses. The first one reads, Kate often watches movies, full stop. The second independent clause reads, she doesn't consider them a great pastime. Now, both of them are independent clauses for the reason that both sentences have their own subject and verb. In case of the first sentence, we've got the subject as Kate, followed by the verb which is watches. In case of the second independent clause, we've got she as the subject and doesn't consider as the verb. Now, it's easy to see that there's a relation of contrast between the two independent clauses. However, it's not evident due to the separation or the presence of the full stop in between. So how do we make these sentences more related? How do we connect them and make them more cohesive? We turn them into a compound sentence using the form just discussed. Let's have a look how that goes. So you have your compound sentence as Kate often watches movies, comma, but she doesn't consider them a great pastime. And there you have it, your compound sentence easily bringing out that relation of contrast between the two sentences. Now let's try and reinforce this concept by taking a look at seven more examples very quickly using each of the coordinating conjunctions coming up on your screen right now. Let's go in the order of fanboys starting with for. As mentioned earlier, the conjunction for is the equivalent of because. Since because indicates cause, we have a fitting compound sentence as Valerie pulled back the curtains for it was a bright sunny day. You have Valerie as the subject to the first independent clause, while pulled back serves as the verb. For the second independent clause, it and was serve as the subject and the verb respectively. On to and. And suggests addition to information. So here's a compound sentence suiting the usage. The smartphone can record voice memos and it can also set reminders. In the first independent clause, you have smartphone as the subject, while record plays the verb. While the second clause has it as the subject and set the verb. Coming to nor. The purpose of the conjunction is addition, however, to a negative sentence. So an example of a compound sentence using nor would be, Janice didn't meet the guests, nor did she enter the same room as them. Notice how the helping verb did immediately follows nor in its positive form did and not the negative didn't, as nor already fills in for the negative. The first independent clause has Janice as the subject and didn't meet as the verb. In the second independent clause, the subject is filled in by she, while enter works as the verb. On to the fourth coordinating conjunction, we have but, which of course is indicative of contrast. Hence the compound sentence, Henry reads suspense novels, but he doesn't remember the plots accurately. As you might have made out in the first independent clause, Henry works as the subject while reads functions in the capacity of the verb. Moving on ahead to or, which renders options or information. Let's see the example. Cecilia will probably call a cab or she will take the metro. You have Cecilia as the subject in the first main clause, with call as the ensuing verb. In the second independent clause, she is the subject, while take is the verb. We come to the sixth coordinating conjunction, yet. Yet is a conjunction of contrast. So here's your compound sentence. Seth is running a high fever, yet he refuses to take medicine. In the first clause, the one running the fever, that is set, serves as the subject while running acts as the verb. In the second clause, he fills in as the subject with refuses as the verb. Finally, we come to so, which introduces the effect to a cause. 
The school lost a teacher today to an accident. So the management, the staff and the students will observe a holiday tomorrow in mourning. In the first clause, you've got school as the subject with lost as the verb. And in the second independent clause, the management, staff and the students put together function as the subject followed by the verb observe. So hopefully that's filled in the gaps in the understanding, if any. And now let's proceed to the final method of constructing a compound sentence, which is using the semicolon. On to the second and final method of composing a compound sentence, we have the one using the semicolon. Now, if you wish to get up and close with all the users of the semicolon, you may go ahead and click on the link above to the video. For now, let's use it to form the compound sentence. Now, the reason why the semicolon is the ideal choice for linking any two independent clauses is that as a pause, the semicolon is neither as final as the period or the full stop, nor is it as brief as the comma. Which is why, if you consider the image of a semicolon, you will find that you have a period stacked upon a comma. Let's have a look at the structure of the compound sentence using the semicolon. We quite simply have two independent clauses linked with a semicolon. Let's illustrate that using the same example as we used before. Uh, we have the compound sentence this time as Kate often watches movies, semicolon, she doesn't consider them a great pastime. And it's as simple as that. However, do note that the S in she has been decapitalized this time, which goes to show that the letter immediately following the semicolon needs to be in the smaller case, unless, of course, it starts a proper noun. Also, please do ensure that you use the semicolon only to link up to independent clauses and not any phrases or dependent clauses. Let's have a look at an example over here. So the sentence this time reads, Kate often watches movies, semicolon, whatever the genre. Now over here, whatever the genre is not a complete and valid independent clause. Rather, what it is, is a modifier clause and it even has the verb missing and hence you have a wrong usage of the semicolon in the case. And this takes me to the final section, which is common problems with compound sentences. Let's go. Speaking of the common errors committed while writing, we have what is called the run-on sentence. Now, a run-on sentence occurs when two or more sentences are written without the correct joining elements. The first variety of the run-on sentence is a fused sentence. A fused sentence occurs when two independent clauses are joined without any separator. Let's take an example. We have, Jimmy loves the taste of lint, he thinks it's the best chocolate. I'm sure you get my point. Now over here, you have two independent clauses which are fused without any separator, any conjunction or any punctuation. Let's see how you can fix this. So the first method of fixing this fused sentence is inserting a period or a full stop at the end of the first independent clause, which as you might have guessed, would be after lint. Now this gives you two separate sentences. The first one being Jimmy loves the taste of lint, full stop, capital H, and you have, he thinks it's the best chocolate. The second way of fixing this is to turn it into a compound sentence using a coordinating conjunction. So that's going to go as, Jimmy loves the taste of lint, comma, and he thinks it's the best chocolate. And finally, you can also edit this with the use of a semicolon, which will go as thus, Jimmy loves the taste of lint, semicolon, he thinks it's the best chocolate. And the second variety of the run-on sentence is the comma splice. Now, a comma splice occurs when two independent clauses are joined using a comma. Let's take an example over here. Once again, we have Jimmy loves the taste of lint. He thinks it's the best chocolate. Now, over here, the second clause, which is he thinks it's the best chocolate, seems entirely unrelated to the first one, whereas there is clearly a relation. How do you fix this? You fix this using the same measures which we used while fixing the fused sentence. And with this, we come to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it useful. If you have, please go ahead, like, share and subscribe. We'll meet soon again. Thank you so much for watching.